our first time that we're coming to coming to you together as um, Pastor and Elder Huff. Amen. Last time, okay, it was just Prophetess Pastor Napier, yeah. and then when he came, it was just Elder Huff, and so now we come to you together as Amen. as Elder and, and and Pastor Mrs. Mr. and Mrs. Huff. Amen. 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 <laughs> I'm living newly with it. We're going to talk to you, um, me and my husband, my husband and I, we decided to do this together. All right. Um, um, because sometimes, well, all the time, two is better than one. Amen. Two is better than one, especially um, when you're a married couple, it's a thing called tag team. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, and so we're going to be tag teaming off of each other. Okay. And so we might carry on a conversation between me and him, but it's not to leave you out, okay? Right. So it's to, sh it's to make you think of things that, so we're gonna be pinging off of each other, okay? And so just to, just to bring in that camaraderie and just for you to get the message of what God is trying to um, say to us. Mm -hmm. There is a, um, my husband asked me what are we preaching on today? But I told him, I don't know. So, <laughs> so um, but God did give me a word, and it's kind of to bounce off of what the revival was um, this week that we've been in with Prophet um, Murphy Henry. Um, the theme of the revival was stepping up to step out. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And so and God gave me a revelation in regards to stepping up to step out. So many times we're so used to just walking straight and we never think about the steps that we have to go through sometimes in order to get to the building. What do we have to do? We have to use the steps. Mm -hmm. We have to step out. Yes. You know, we have to step up. We have to step up. We have to step up in order to get to the front door, yes. right? Yes. And so sometimes when we get to that front door, then we then we need to we have to open up the front door and step into it. Yes. Step into the building. So so many times God wants us to step up to step out. Step out, step up, and, get, and step out into your blessings. Amen. Step up and step out into what God has for you. Yes. Okay? Because God has made but so many times we're so held behind and our generational curses and what we or what is plaguing us on that day and our family and our friends and what we've been told to us all our lives, we never thought about stepping up. Okay? All we think about because we are religious people and we are traditional people, all we think about is going deeper. Oh, I'm going deeper and yeah, I don't want to go deeper. I remember the mothers of the church. You know, we used to, the mothers of the church would say, oh, praise the Lord, take you deeper, daughter. Praise the Lord, take you deeper. But what about taking you higher? Amen, amen. Yes. There's a difference between yes. deeper and higher. Yes. Okay? And so we have a scripture that is, and we're going to read you two versions of this scripture mm -hmm. because there might not, there might have been um, some, some when some of us that um, are are KJV, uh, King James Version orientated. Um, sometimes we need to get another breakdown of another translation, and I'm one of those. I love, I love, I love KJV. I was brought up on KJV, but I love other translations also. Mm -hmm. So my husband is going to read King James, and then I'm going to come to you with the Message Bible. Okay. Message Bible is broken down in modern day vernacular. Okay, and so sorry. King James Version. Start. Our verse of scripture comes from Isaiah 50, chapter 59, mm -hmm. verses 19 through 21. Once you have it, please say amen. 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 King James Version, and it reads, So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west, and his glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. Mm -hmm. And the Redeemer shall come to Zion, mm -hmm. and unto them that turn from a transgression. And Jacob, saith the Lord, as for me, this is my covenant with them, saith the Lord. My spirit that is upon thee, and my words which I have put in thy mouth, 
shall not depart out of thy mouth, nor out of the mouth of thy seed, nor out of the mouth of thy seed's seed, mm -hmm. saith the Lord, from hence now and forevermore. Amen. 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 Now I'm going to read to you from the Message Bible. Okay? And it says, God looked and saw evil looming on the horizon. Mm -hmm. And so much evil and no sign of justice. He couldn't believe what he saw. Not a soul around to correct this awful situation. So he did it himself. Took on the work of salvation, fueled by his own righteousness. He dressed in righteousness, put it on like a suit of armor, with salvation on his head like, like a helmet, put on judgment like an overcoat, and threw a cloak of passion across his shoulders. He'll make everyone pay for what they've done. Fury for his foes, just deserts for his enemies. Even the far off islands will get paid off in full. In the west, they'll fear the name of the Lord. In the east, they'll feel the glory of the Lord. For he'll arrive like a river in flood stage, whipped to a, whipped to a torrent by the wind of God. I'll arrive in Zion as redeemer to those in Jacob who leave their sins. God's decree. Hmm. God's decree. Yes. If you notice, we are reading from the Old Testament, as they call it. But from what from the description of everything that was said was very much about the coming of Christ, and not just the coming of Christ, but his very sacrifice on the cross in itself. And if you if you one of the things that's so amazing is when she gave the description about let me get there. For he'll arrive like a river in blood stage. When, when they pierced his side, mm -hmm. the blood that came gushing out <laughs> couldn't stop him. Mm -hmm. that, that blood that came gushing out, it poured out. I don't know if, if, if those of you who remember the, the old movie from back then about the Ten Commandments, I believe it was, when they pierced his side and it just kept running. Mm -hmm. And it kept running. It ran through the streets. It just kept running. They couldn't stop it. And as it ran, that's that flood stage river mm -hmm. that goes out. And it had to be a flood stage. So that it covered the entirety hey. of the earth and covered the entirety of our sins. Mm -hmm. I thank God that he was able to do such a thing. Not, not, not that he was just able, but that he was willing to do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That he loved us enough. The thing is, he looked out from eternity from the beginning and he saw all those various things. He saw the very evil of mankind itself. Yes. If you remember when the children of Israel were, were, have, were, were had sinned so much, that he had to repent yes. that he ever made them. Yes. Right. yes. When a parent has to say, I'm sorry I ever gave birth to you. Jesus. That's a poor moment yes. right there yes. in a yes. child's yes. life. Yes, it is. Yes. But just think, our father had to say that very thing himself. Yes. Yes. But he knew it was simply because of the evil that existed. Yes, yes. So he still said, he said, regardless, I will step down. Into flesh, and I would give my life as a sacrifice to be a standard against the evil. Mm -hmm. To be a standard, and 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 the children when the children were in the wilderness, the Israelites were in the wilderness. They made the brazen serpent. Mm -hmm. The brazen serpent was was put on a staff as he commanded Moses to do so because it was a standard mm -hmm. against evil. There was a standard that had to be set. Even back then, the standard was set. And still to this day, that standard is set. We are wearing it as a cloak. When we put it on, and we become saved, we put it on as a cloak of passion. Mm -hmm. That's why they call it the passion of the Christ. Mm -hmm. but, uh, so let me ask you a question. So doesn't this go back to the part of when he said he could not believe what he saw and not a soul around to correct the situation, that awful situation, what does that make you think of? What that makes me think of is that there was no person that could ever be born on the face of this earth to man, to born a woman, that could ever 
be pure enough to take on the sins of the world. There was no sacrifice that could ever be given good enough for the sins that a man would commit. But don't that make you think of Noah? The days of Noah? It does make me think of the, name, the days of Noah because man was so so evil at that point in time that he just mm -hmm. he, he, he had to set aside, he had to try to find, struggle to find someone that was righteous amongst all those people. Mm -hmm. And even then, he only named, go back to it, he only named three people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Last I checked, there was more people in the boat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. And then don't it also make you think about when Abraham, when he was going and there was Sodom and Gomorrah, and he kept asking the Lord, is there, can you just, is, is there any, you know, ser mm -hmm. I'm searching? Okay, and if you just give me, let me allow me, just let me go find 10, let me go find 5, and it kept just dropping down, and it just mm -hmm. kept dropping down, but there was nobody there to correct, and the Bible says there was nobody there to correct the awful mm -hmm. situation. Now, let me bring that to you on today. Is there anybody here to correct the awful situation that's going on in the world, that's going on in our, in our church? Mm -hmm. In the body of Christ, is there anybody that's going to stand up and raise up a standard to correct the awful situation that's going on in the household, in the body of Christ? Yes. Is there not anyone? So question to this. When we yes, go, when you, if you notice in the descriptions that he gave, it talked about how he put on justice as a cloak and different pieces of the armor. Mm -hmm. When we go to the to the description that Apostle Paul gave of the armor of God. Yes. What was the last thing he said? And having done all, stand. to stand. That's right. And so that is the background of this. The background is talking about the armor of God. Mm -hmm. Okay? Because he said he put on the armor. So if the Lord had to put on armor, mm -hmm. Elder Hub, how come we don't put on our armor? All right. Run mm. around there. Mm. Okay, running around naked, ain't got no armor on, but we think that we're so strong, we think that we're so full of the word, and we running around butt naked. Okay, let me take you here. Come here, sons of Sceva. Okay, sons of Sceva, they thought they could cast out demons. They thought that they could work the same work, okay, mm -hmm. of the Lord, okay, and as the, as the apostles. And the devil ended up beating their tails butt naked, and they ran out through the streets oh. butt naked. Okay, how many of you running around butt naked, but the devil done whooped you upside your head, okay? He done whooped your behind, and you running around butt naked and don't even know that you're naked because you have no covering. Because you are a rebellious people, you're a prideful people, and you have no covering. You don't want to be covered. You're not asking to be covered. Hallelujah. You just want to run around butt naked. Yes. The emperor's new clothes. Mm. The emperor's new clothes. <laughs> you want to run around the way you want to go. You think you know everything. Oh okay. So you have the formalness of you have you have you have the, the, the form of God, but you're denying the power thereof. The very power of the Holy Ghost is what clothed you. Okay. The very power of the righteousness of God is what clothes. You. Yes. Okay, and salvation. He said he dressed yes. in righteousness. Yes. He put on his suit of armor. Salvation was his helmet. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Do we wear salvation as our duty? Does anybody even know we saved? Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. Does anybody know that we even got salvation in our lives? Yes. Does anybody see the difference? Does anybody see the light of the Lord, the illuminosity of his glory? Does anybody even see that in our lives? As a Christian, as a kingdom people, Christian means Christ-like. We don't act like Christ. Oh, today we are, though. What's, what, what's today? Everybody's acting Christ-like today. Well, well, some of us is acting Christ. Some of us have the fear enough to act like Christ all day long. Amen. Some of us only have the fear to act like Christ until the end of church. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
And then once church is over with, then we start acting like the devil again mm -hmm. as soon as we get home. Okay? Mm -hmm. And so how come we can't be Christ-like and be kingdom-minded on Monday morning? Right. How come we can't do that on Tuesday? Okay? How come we can't do that? Oh, wait. Wednesday? Oh, hold on. Hold on. Wednesday we might act a little crazy because that's Bible study now. That's right. That's right. We don't come to the Bible and say, I'm on. <laughs> okay, but then come after Wednesday night when we get back home, here we go acting like the devil again All right. until Sunday morning. Mm -hmm. And it might act like the devil on the way to church. Okay, so we only act Christ like when we are in the house of the Lord. But honey, what okay, so remember that scripture right here? It says in the, in the West. Mm. They'll fear the name of the Lord, mm -hmm. but in the east they'll feel they'll fear the glory okay. of the Lord. You get that? That's two different things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What, what, what does that mean, honey? In the west they'll feel the name of the Lord, in the east they'll feel the glory. Mm. There's still some work to be done. Amen. Because here they didn't talk about the north and the south. Mm -mm. He didn't say anything about the north and the south. Okay. Okay, so let me tell you about West prophetically. West and, and, and prophetically means warfare. Okay, whenever you see anything um, in the Word of God and it says, find this, find something in the Word of West, um, and, it, and, and it says West, a lot of times you will see that there is a war. There is a warfare that was in the West. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, so East means prosperity okay that's what east east means prosperity in the prophetic okay and so anytime you see anything of east it means growth it means prosperity it means wealth it means health anything dealing with with east that's what that means okay west means war that means win west wins Okay, you have to understand about it, and, and it's so crazy because uh, January, January when I ran a revival, there was a revival, and it was called Earth, Wind, and Fire mm -hmm. revival. Okay, and I talked about the different winds and what their prophetic means with, means were when you talk about winds and what does it mean? Okay, North, um, South winds means calming. Because think about it, in the cool of the day, the south wind was blowing. Mm -hmm. Okay? And so we have to understand what the winds mean. When we talk about winds prophetically, we have to understand what winds mean in, in the prophetic because it all carries a meaning, okay, to it. And so um, east wind is a very, oh, okay, wait a minute, I might have had that. Okay, wait a minute, I might have had this trip stripped around. Okay, east wind. East wind is very strong, hot, and dry, okay? Especially when you read in Genesis 41. Yes, that is correct. When you read in uh, Genesis 41, okay, 41 and 6, okay? Also, the east wind is very fierce. It destroys, it scatters, and it sweeps out. Jonah was swept out and into the fish by the east wind, okay? And so in order, the east wind was what God raised to part the waters of the Red Sea. So I'm sorry, I apologize. East wind is basically, is, is, is um, war, and it comes to destroy and scatter, okay? I'm sorry, I got that, got that mixed up. The east wind comes with crisis or tragedy. It brings destruction, it brings famine, it empties the church. Mm. Okay, it's the emptying of the church. The west wind in Exodus 10 and 19, and the Lord turned a mighty strong west wind, which took away the locusts and cast them into the Red Sea. Mm -hmm. West wind brings rain. Mm -hmm. There we go. Mm -hmm. It brings rain, rain, rain of blessings, okay? Mm -hmm. A remedy for the east wind, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. It is refreshing, the east wind is. And so that's why he said in, in this verse, um, in the east they will fear, in the west they will fear the name 
of the Lord. The reason why they have to fear the name of the Lord in the west wind because they have no fear because it is so fierce. Because it destroys. And so they have to understand the name of the Lord. In the east, they fear the glory of God. The very illuminosity of the very thing that, that, that God moves through the very glory of him. That's why they have to fear. What, and it's not so much as fear. Fear in the, in the Bible means reverence. Mm -hmm. So they have to reverence the name of the Lord in the West. And they have to reverence the glory of the Lord in the East. Mm -hmm. All right. One of the things a lot of people tend to get mixed up, they hear about the fear, the fearing of the Lord. And we have to understand the Bible says, God has not given us a spirit of fear. Mm -hmm. Yes. But of power. Love. Love and a sound mind. Yes, Lord. We have to understand when you go back and you do your research concerning the fear of the Lord, you also find out that when he speaks of the fear, what he's talking about is a hatred for evil. Mm -hmm. Yes. And that can be found in Proverbs. What he talks about is a hatred for evil. So when we, if the fear of the Lord is an action work, is an action yes. term. It means we ought to hate evil. So mm -hmm. being that they will fear the name of the Lord, then that tells us there's some evil there in the world. Yes, 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 yes. And they're going to, they have to grow to the point where they hate the very evil that is there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, and that is true. And so, and because with the west wind, with the west wind, because it brings about so much, um, it brings about so much disaster, okay? Hold on. East wind. East wind brings about so much disaster and it scatters, okay? It scatters. We are scattered. We've allowed the east wind to blow into our lives. Okay. And it and it's it has scattered us. We we don't get closer to God because and I don't know if you ever heard of this saying, don't be scatter minded. Mm -hmm. Okay? We've allowed things to scatter our mind that we are no longer focused on God. Mm -hmm. Okay? We're we're no longer focused on the people of God. Mm -hmm. We're no longer focused on the needs of the people. Now I'm talking to leaders. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're no longer focused on the needs of the people. We're just so worried about our edifice and how beautiful it is mm -hmm. and how bigger of an edifice we can get, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. Let me tell you something about when, let me tell you about the word of God. There was a man in the New Testament and he had barns and he said, and he said, you know what? I'm doing pretty good. I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna build bigger barns, mm -hmm. okay? And he kept building bigger barns and he keep, and, and so he lost his focus on his very first barn. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, he lost focus on his very first barn, and he kept going bigger, and, go, and, and so his focus was now on, I'm going to build bigger and better barns. So that is what a lot of us as leaders, we're going to build bigger and better churches. We're going to be the mega church of, 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 of San Antonio, Texas. You know, we're going to have the biggest church. We're going to be like Joe Osteen in, in, in Houston. We're going to be like Ivy Hilliard in Houston. You know, so, and it's not about that. And so we totally lose focus on the people that are in the church. We have mothers, single mothers in the church that is needy. But we can't help them. We can't give their children a free book bag. We can't give them no, 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 no free school supplies and socks. Because why? Because we worried about our efforts and making sure that the bills are paid, making sure that budget is met on a mega church. Mm -hmm. And so that's why God is saying no, because now it's going to start raining on the little churches. Why? Because we care about our people. Yes. Okay? You. What what you need? We care about our, our widows and our mothers. Yes. Okay? I have my mother, my church mother. I'm like, what you need, mama? You know, anything we need, I'll go get it. What, what you need? Okay? We care about, we care about our people, church people. We care about, we care about the mother. You, why are you taking the bus, mama? It's raining outside. It's cold outside. Oh, but go to a big church. They don't care. You take the bus, walk, whatever. How you get that? I just need you there with your social security tie check. Oh, did I say that? Yes, yes. 
it's okay. Yeah. It's all right. Yeah. It's right. Yeah. Yeah. It's right. Yeah. Yeah. It's right. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
This is a part of the stepping out that we miss so much. Don't get me wrong, there's lots of churches that are doing this, but this is one of the things that sustains the little guys so much. It reads, is this not the path that I have chosen? Mm -hmm. To loose the bands of wickedness, mm -hmm. to undo the heavy burdens, mm -hmm. and to let the oppressed go free, and that ye break every yoke? Is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry, and that thou bring the poor that are cast out to thy house? When thou seest the naked, wait a second, mm -hmm. that includes some of your brothers that are out there being so deep, that thou cover him, and that thou hide not thyself from thine own flesh. That means but be having fellowship with your fellow brothers. Mm -hmm. Going out there instead of, I know he has a small church and, and he's trying to make do and everything else, but I'm asleep. It's my morning to get sleep. I, this is my day of rest. I ain't going to do nothing else. Mm. You, 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 you too high and mighty to even fellowship. Mm -hmm. You too high and mighty to support. And, and just in case you, you, you say to yourself, again, that was the Old Testament. Let me, let me bring the confirmation of it to you from the New Testament. James chapter 1, verse 26. And it reads, If any man among you seem to be religious, and brighteneth not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, this man's religion is in vain. Pure religion, and undefiled before God, and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction, and to keep himself unspotted from the world. The very same thing that was said in Isaiah 58, repeated again in the New Testament. Mm -hmm. There's a reason why, because we have to get to the point where we have to step out, and we got to get back out there. We got to start witnessing. I'm tired every time I'm at home and I'm relaxing. I hear Jehovah's Witness, whatever happened to McConnell Pentecostal Witness, Whatever happened to Kojic Witness, mm -hmm. whatever happened to Church of Christ Witness, I'm not seeing it, I'm not hearing it. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. Because we're still in the four walls and having a good time. And to be honest with you, I've been to some of the churches. Most of them are sitting there and they're dead. Mm -hmm. the, the, the song church is going strong, glory, ushering in the Spirit of the Lord, and everybody's just sitting there watching. With a, as a lump on a log. Lump on a log. <laughs> dead to the world. That person is singing their heart out. I'm sorry, this is not entertainment. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Oh, oh, oh. You know that's right. You know that's right up my alley, baby. Oh, sorry, Heather. Um, <laughs> now, can I read this to you in the Message Bible? In the Message Bible, it says, "This is a kind of fast day I'm after. Yeah. To break the chains of injustice." Get rid of exploitation in the workplace. Free the oppressed. Cancel debts. What I'm interested in seeing in you 